So good morning and welcome to another edition of Better Business, Better Life. Today, I am really thrilled to be joined by Wendy Tangi, um, who is from WE. And WE is a business consultancy um, practice with accounting. Uh, welcome, Wendy. Thank you. Thank you so much for having me. Oh, I'm really looking forward to having a chat with you. Um, so Wendy and I actually met through LinkedIn, I believe, wasn't it? Yeah. Yes. And then we suggested we go and do a little bit of walk and talk together and found that we had quite a lot in common. And from there, we've developed a, both a friendship and a, and a business relationship. We have. But tell me, Wendy, um, tell me about your business. Your business, you started back in 2011 with your husband, Ali. Um, you've got some other family members in the business, 26 staff already. Mm-hmm. Tell me a little bit about your journey to that and include your um, professional and personal best for me. Hmm. Um, So, yeah, it's been a journey, (laughs) Um, definitely. Um, My personal best would be, I mean, I was thinking about this before, but, um, you know, you'd want to say marrying my husband, but then you've got to say having my children. So I'm going to say the most recent one, which is getting my mukokoi, which I did uh, just a couple of weeks ago. So that was, um, yeah, that was a pretty awesome spiritual exciting journey so that would be my personal best yep. um, and just to, just to say I actually watched that video that you put out on LinkedIn around that and it was just so beautiful to you. see how the whole family comes together and the whole ceremony around it I hadn't appreciated quite how significant it actually was thank you um my daughter-in-law did the video and uh while I was going through the experience I was wondering how on earth I was going to put across just the experience and the spirituality and the the love of the event and she did it perfectly so it came across really well okay well congratulations and it looks fantastic thank you um and so yeah my uh, professional best I think just even starting in business because uh when I said to Ali that I wanted to start our own business he initially said no um and I begged for him to at least just have a look at it. And so being that he was an accountant, well, actually he was an auditor, so he didn't do accounting. Yeah. Um, so he did auditing for a number of years um, in a, one of the big five accounting firms and then also for the IRD. Um, so when I said let's start an accounting firm, he was not thrilled at all by it. In <laughs> fact, he doesn't actually like accounting. Um, but um, I said, oh, can you at least just have a look at the numbers and do a plan or just do something like don't just say no to me, at least look into it. And so he did. So he looked at a budget and he did the budget up and he, I mean, we'd been doing budgets since about two weeks into our relationship. So um, yeah, he did a personal budget, he did a business budget, uh, he did a plan and he said to me, actually, we can make this work. Um, so that was very cool. And then uh, he gave in his notice and we decided I'd stay at the bank because that's where I was at the time. And uh, just after he gave his notice, we found out we're having Blake. And so we were like, oh, this wasn't really in the plan. Um, and so the budget. No. <laughs> and I thought, I thought that he was at that stage going to say, OK, you know, and he actually got offered a job. Um, and he said, no, actually, we can make this work still. So I'm really stoked that um, that he made that decision that we continued on. And yeah, here we are today. So. So that was what, 11 years ago, right? And, yes. and that would have been quite a big sort of scary leap to go from both of you having jobs within other businesses to actually going out on your own. Yeah. Why? Why did you start the business? Yeah, so at the time uh, we had five, uh, four sons yep. and um, I was working in corporate. He was working in corporate. And my dad had been an entrepreneur all my life. And so I was quite lucky in that any time that I was away cycling or sport or any school stuff, he got the opportunity to come and watch and be part of it. And I really was missing that with my children. Uh-huh. And I realized that they're not going to be young for long. And um, I wanted to be able to do what I wanted to do whenever I wanted to do it without having to fill out a leave form or having my boss complain about how much sick leave that I'd taken. Because at the time I was a solo mom, I'm trying to raise two boys. So um, yeah, I just thought, actually, I, I don't want that. So when I met Ali, I said to him, I'd love to go into business. I didn't really know what I wanted to do. Um, and then when he became a chartered accountant, this was a perfect opportunity for us to go into business. So I kind of refer it to as me pimping him out. Um, but he's getting his own back now because now I'm in business consulting and doing he's coaching. Pimping he's pimping you, me right? out. <laughs> That's fantastic. So you're, you are accountant, an accountant or not? I'm not an accountant. No, okay. I don't do accounting. Yep. Um, I went on maternity leave. And decided I'd help Ali out in the business 
while I was on maternity leave for 12 months and uh, I didn't actually go back to the bank. So at the start, I was just really around the marketing and communications and how do we um, do good customer service and, you know, what does what do we look like? So I was really the visionary right from the start. Yeah. Um, but I really just pushed Ali into a lot of things and I kind of just laid in the background and um, yeah, just looked for all of the opportunities and said, we're doing this, we're yeah. going here, just just do this. And so, yeah, come to the 12 month time, he said to me, actually, you're too valuable in the business and I need you to stay. <laughs> um, so I stayed and um, I haven't looked back. I love it. Wouldn't go back to working for somebody else. I don't think anybody would actually employ us these days, would they? I don't think anyone <laughs> wants to employ me. In fact, my old bosses probably despised me because I was always a challenge. Yep. Um, but that's fine. Uh, and you yeah. found, your, found your niche now. That's Absolutely. great. Um, so you decided to go into business for the freedom um, my, my experience in the first couple of years in business, we don't seem to get too much of that. Would that be fair to say? Um, 11 years in and I'm still struggling with freedom. <laughs> <laughs> but I think freedom is different to everybody. Yeah. And um, I, we like Ali and I love what we do. So we choose to be at our desks at whatever time it is of the evening. Yeah. Um, you know, after we've spent time with the kids and we've done the whole dinner thing and and we've done that for so many years. And even when they were younger, I remember in the first few years when we we're just trying to pay the bills, yep. um, you know, we'd get home from work, we'd cook dinner, we'd do homework, we'd do all of that sort of stuff. We'd put them to bed, we'd pull out our laptops, we'd sit at the kitchen table and sometimes we'd be there till like two or three o'clock in the morning, just yep. getting the work done. Um, and we, at the time we couldn't really afford to hire somebody and we were so flat out um, during the day that we just had to and so you know there are times where you're like oh my gosh what am I doing but yeah. in saying that we still got to go to the school things we still got to watch the cultural events we still got to be there and watch all their sports and sponsor their rugby teams so yeah, yeah. so it's not necessarily about having sort of more hours uh, sorry, it's not, it's not necessarily about having, um, you know, a set time when you start and finish, but having the flexibility to work the hours that you can work in the times that you want to, really, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. yeah, it's about being able to choose what you want to do and when you want to do it and yeah. knowing that sometimes you just got to work. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so as we said in the beginning, you know, you've got 26 staff now and a couple of them are actually family members as well. They are. Yeah, and that's been quite a rapid growth over the last couple of years, hasn't it? So from the beginning when you're probably working around the kitchen table, working all those hours on your own, gives a little bit of an insight into the journey because we get taught in university that you know it's this beautiful growth <laughs> curve where everything goes smoothly and you know it's just a beautiful ride overnight success oh, if only <laughs> yeah. someone show me that business <laughs> yeah. yeah so what, what was it was it like really um yeah it was I mean it has been ups and ups and downs and we've grown every single year which has been awesome um some years way more than others mm -hmm. um I think the turning point for us though was just before I got breast cancer so that was uh five years ago in 2017 mm -hmm. um we'd just finished doing some work with one of the big four accounting firms and we're in the middle of it and they were telling us that we should stop spending so much time and money with our community with our family that our culture didn't differentiate us and that was quite demoralizing but also a big turn for us yep. where we realized actually you guys haven't switched on to this yet um and so we need to pretty quickly and we're yep. quite lucky because you know i'm Māori, my husband's samoan we weren't um pretending to be something we just worse yep. so um so that was really that was really the starting point for us then I got cancer pretty much straight away after that and um decided that I needed to work out what my purpose in life was mm -hmm. um I just lost my dad and my grandfather the same year three months and six months prior and my sister had been diagnosed with um, breast cancer three months prior to that too so lots of sort of trauma happening in my life and I thought you know, if I'm going to die, I want to die happy and I want to live a fulfilled life so that when I die, people come to my funeral and everyone will be happy and celebrating and, um, you know, hopefully I'll have made a difference. So it's interesting, isn't it? Because I mean, I, I haven't had breast cancer and I can't imagine what that's like, but, I, you know, I lost my brother and my mum very close to each other. Mm. And for me, that was a massive turning point as well, because it wasn't that I didn't love what I was doing, but I was really 
everything was business, everything was work, and I didn't have any time to do the other stuff that was really important to me. And as a consequence, I think if I look back now, I was burnt out. Mm. Um, and it suddenly was this wake up call. It's like, my goodness, I could actually not be here tomorrow. And how would I feel um, about what well, I wouldn't feel anything because I'd be dead, but you know, <laughs> would it be the life that I really wanted to live? And yeah. I think sometimes that can have a massive impact on us. Yeah. Yeah. I don't and think I, your, you... your sister, obviously. Um, was another major thing as well wasn't it yes my sister um she passed away last year in September Mm -hmm. um it's yeah I just think that people I don't I didn't really understand what it meant about life can be short you know live your best life I didn't get that Mm -hmm. until I was really faced with it and then I was like this is what they mean by that (laughs) yeah and so then I was like okay I gotta do something about this I mean I didn't have to but um you know, when I watched my dad and my and my grandfather die, they both died quite differently. So my grandfather died and it was just filled with so much love and all of the impact that he'd made. And all these people came to his funeral and I just mm. saw he really lived a purposeful life yeah. and he was really content with dying. Mm-hmm. Um, my dad, when he died, he got told that he had just weeks to live. And I saw those weeks just kind of come and go and him sort of thinking, I wish I had done this and I should have done that. And, yeah. um, and I just thought, I don't want to be like that, you know, and if it's a short years, then it's a short years, but at least I want to make them impactful and purposeful. Yeah. Um, and, you know, just going back to what you said um, before about, you know, just really loving what you do. That's what I realized is I just got to do the things that I love for mm-hmm. the people that I love the most. And if that annoys some people because they don't make the cut, then <laughs> there's so be it. You know, um, I've just got to do what I've got to do. And if it fits, it fits. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. Yeah. Okay. That's a really good philosophy on life. I I agree with wholeheartedly. So tell me a little bit about the sort of the growth of the business. So, you know, when you go from being just you and Ali around a table, it's pretty easy to make decisions. Communication is quite easy, although there's always the husband and wife dynamic as well. Um, But then you start to bring people on board. Tell us a little bit about that journey of bringing people. Was it all smooth sailing? Have, you know, have we had wonderful employees across the board? (laughs) If only. Um, You know, just recently, Ali and I did get to a point where we needed to have other people around the table. And um, we have tried in the past and other people who have tried to come in and sort of said they felt like a third wheel because Ali and I, husband and wife, we talk at home, um, you know, in the bed, you know, we're like having conversations about business <laughs> yeah. and, you know, it's like we can't have a third person in there having these <laughs> conversations with us. Yeah. Um, and then we just have like the unspoken word. It's like we kind of know each other. So it's just kind of like, I know what he'll say. I know what she'll say. Um, so just recently when we've started to bring on more sort of leadership people, it's been really awesome to just go, okay, business is business, home is home. Let's not have those conversations outside of business. Let's make sure that they're part of them. But also we've actually really enjoyed it because 11 years of it pretty much being on our shoulders, um, you know, started to feel a little bit like a burden and you kind of think, okay, do I have all the answers? I don't think I do. Where do I get these answers from? It has been nice to have other people around the table to not only help with the decision-making and, you know, the problem solving, but also they're the ones actually going out and doing the problem solving. You know, it's not just down to Ali and I, and we have really enjoyed that. But yes, along the way, you know, it has not been smooth sailing at all um made lots and lots of errors hired all of the wrong people in the wrong seats and a lot of that time was because of us right and so what have you learned from that what could you take forward from that yeah I think um get it right the first time (laughs) if you possibly can yes um we have a full-on process now for hiring people um just making sure like using the philosophy that I have you know love what you do um with the people that you love you spend so much time at work so you've got to make sure that you love the people so you've got to be part of the environment and the culture you've got to live and breathe our values so which we call the we way um you've got to be aligned with our purpose and our vision otherwise what's the point go find your own purpose and value go go and do what what makes you happy um and then can just be really clear on the role like yep. what actually do I really need? And we haven't always done that. And I mean, I think we need this. Or actually, you'd be really cool in my business. Just come and work for me. And we'll find and you I'll a find job. something <laughs> yeah. for you. Yeah. And then all of a sudden, these misalignment of expectations and, you know, their understanding of the role and my needs. And I'm like, oh, I don't actually need you to do that. But if they really love that, they're going to do that. Yes. So, you know, really understanding what it is that they love, what um, they want to be doing all day, every day, and making sure that that is the role. And if it's not the role, then 
let them find another role that allows them to do that. Yeah, because they've got to do what they love as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Cool. Okay. So you and I, as I said, we met on, on LinkedIn and we had this walk and talk and I gave you a book and you read the book. And then quite a bit later, you kind of came back to me and said, look, I've been reading this book and I quite like it. And obviously that was the either get a grip or traction, wasn't it? I can't remember which you one You gave was. me both. Did I? Oh, there yes. you go. And probably being the student that you are, you read both of them. I did. Consumed them, yeah. And then you came to me and said, hey, look, can you give me a hand? And you had been doing some self-implementing, obviously. And then it was like, okay, how can I help? What what did what attracted you to the EOS model, the EOS way, EOS life, whatever it might be? I, as we've grown, we've gotten a little bit more complex because we have a business in Samoa, we have one in New Zealand, we have all these aspirations, and with that, what we thought was complexity, we thought that everything had to be complex. Mm -hmm. And so when I read the books, I was like, okay, these businesses are like multi-million dollar businesses in the US. And they are doing this really simple system. Why can't we make things way more simpler than we are making them? And um, yeah, it took a little while. I did mention it to Ali to start with. And he was like, hmm. Um, but then we got to a point where I was like, okay, yep. read this book. Just read it. <laughs> and, and he's not a big reader, is he? He, actually, he loves to read, but he doesn't read much around um, self-help books or a personal development or business development. He, yep. He's more into fiction stuff sci-fi yeah uh, yes yeah, <laughs> yeah loves sci-fi yeah and so um I said please just read it and he actually read it I think in like a day he didn't oh. take that long wow and um he was like this is awesome okay what do we do and I'm like okay so we just contact Deborah and we have a phone call and then yeah. we just see and I'm like and if it's the right fit if it's meant to be it will be and if it's not then that's fine but we've got to do something different because yeah. what we're doing is not working and we were just going round and round in circles and it just seems so complex like I said so um, I think if I'm yeah. right you had something like 47 kind of goals for a quarter was that or something some ridiculous a number for a year yeah 47 goals for a year and I remember when you first told me that it's like I know you're a superwoman. I know Ali's a super guy, but seriously. <laughs> and the fact that we were owning all of those ourselves. Yes. I was like, I was like, oh, we're not going to achieve all of these. Yeah. Um, there's no way. I wouldn't even tell my clients to do these many. And so I'd keep sort of saying that we don't need these many. Why do we have so many? This is just so complicated. Mm -hmm. um, we're just setting ourselves up for failure. Um, so yes, yeah, so I knew there had to be a different way. Yeah. Okay. And what has been the sort of biggest learning? Because we're now um probably what four or five months into it uh how what's been the biggest learning for you through that process so many things one definitely is the simplicity of it and then yeah. also just not having to be the only people at the table mm -hmm. so a meeting agenda is so much crisper and cleaner and to the point and stuff gets done I would have sworn them but I'd better not um <laughs> and um even our team love it because they're like, oh, wow, like we've actually solved that problem. Yes. And we're actually doing something about it because so often it'd be like, you know, it's the conversation in the back somewhere about an issue. And then I'd be, okay, this is how we solve it. And then no one's documented it. No one's taking any action on it. And then I get asked about it later on. Like, oh, what did we decide? I can't remember what I decided. Yeah. You know, so, so just even that has been so much better. I have to say those level 10 meetings, I think they're a game changer. I think if you did oh, yeah. nothing else out of EOS, but have had those level 10 meetings yeah. and did the IDS, the issue solving stuff, it makes a significant difference. Yeah. So good. And just reporting, and it doesn't have to be, again, doesn't have to be complex, yep. but just keeping on top of everything. And then what I also like about the level 10s is it's not just Ali and I holding each other accountable. Mm. We have a team of people that are holding us accountable and we're holding them accountable yep. um but you know going back to what you said about husband and wife you know it's it's like sometimes I find it difficult to hold him accountable sometimes he finds it difficult to hold me accountable so yep. there's other people at the table they're holding us accountable <laughs> and I don't have to do it and he doesn't have to do it yep. and that saves our marriage so it's a <laughs> it's a win-win all round that is excellent and so just um, for people listening in who won't know this so we obviously had to go through the accountability chart and some what the structure was that was right for the business then who was going to do what role and Ali has basically gone into the integrator role which is part of the glue that holds it all together beats the drum and then you obviously were quite quite logically the visionary in terms yes. of you know the big ideas big relationships how is it being a husband and wife and working together in that visionary integrated relationship um we've always kind of worked quite well mm -hmm. um he has his skill set I have my skill set and although I was the CEO or the integrator by label um it makes perfect sense for me to be the visionary because I'm the one with the million ideas and yeah. Ali's always like rolling his eyes at my million <laughs> ideas um and so it's good that he is in that role because 
in the past um I've just thrown out my ideas expected the team to do it and then the next week I've got a different idea um and then they all get confused and wonder what on earth is she doing so it's nice to have that person that's in the middle that can kind of go okay this is what we're going to do let's mitigate this da 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 yeah. Is that still a good idea next week, Wendy? Um, cool, yes, it is. Okay, we're going to look into it. So um, it to make it really defined in what our goals are means that it's easier to hold us accountable to. Because mm -hmm. it's like, okay, as per our accountability chart, yeah. this is what you need to be doing. Um, and as per, you know, this is what I need to be doing. And so it just um, makes it quite clear and then there's no animosity and it's not about the person. It's just about the role and the expectations of it. Um, and it's actually made Ali and I talk a whole lot less about work and our jobs and what's working and not working outside of business because it all just kind of gets tied up in the business and it's all sorted and solved in the level tens. And Once a week. Yeah. yeah. And so we don't really have to stress about them anymore, which has been really nice. We love working together, but yeah. we have a shared purpose and vision um, and values and um, we both have our own skill sets to help us to achieve that so yeah. and we've also put EOS into the Samoan team as well and they're now starting to adopt it are they sort of finding similar results over there I know you've got a very talented man running that operation I do but even the team over there like before we started rolling out the level 10s into the departments they were IDSing way like you know already like the team okay so we've done this this is the issue and we've gone through the ideas process and I'm thinking my team in New Zealand aren't even doing this yet <laughs> um so that's awesome I'm like man you guys are cool gold stars all around but yeah. um yeah no they love it yeah. um and even you know Fa'avai who's our CEO who's been in big organizations done some pretty incredible things because he worked with the Virgin Group didn't he He did yeah. and in New Zealand and yes. so oh, yeah, for him to have to forget all of that and then implement the EOS system. I was a little bit worried to start mm. with. Is he going to be able to do this? Yep. Um, you know, think, oh, sometimes when you're in your own ways, you're just so used to it. But no, nah, he's really gone for it and implemented it. He loves it. Um, the whole team are doing it. They're doing all of the level 10s and departments now. Um, and oh, our leaders, cards, yeah. yeah, and our leaders have really stepped up, ah. which is really awesome. So um and yeah. you think that comes from having some really clear accountabilities and knowing what they're there to do and so they've got something to measure against yeah and so us to be able to do that accountability chart and go okay we need a leader here yeah let's gwc it so it's much they get it they want it um and that they're capable of doing it and um yeah they just say yep i get it yep i want it yep i'm capable or maybe i'm not quite yet but will you help me to get there yeah um we've had the resources to be able to help them and so um yeah they've really stepped into it yeah and in your experience um it, it can also be a helpful tool when people aren't quite right the, the right fit too right because you have been doing the people analyzer and that kind of stuff in your sessions how has that gone i mean i yeah i'd love to hear your experiences of it yeah um yes not all of the time does everybody get it want it or have the capability or the capacity to do it yes <laughs> um and then we've just sort of worked out which of those are they not fitting and are they still a fit or are they not a fit so are we going to put the resources into this um and usually we would try like yeah. okay if you don't um don't have the capacity for it yet let's help you to get the capacity um but if they're not getting it and they don't really want it then it's so hard so yeah we've had to do that we've had to have uh courageous conversations <laughs> yes. um and that the quarterly conversations has been a great tool for us to be able to use as an opportunity to just have a discussion mm. and find out where exactly they're at sometimes they don't actually realize that they don't get it or that they don't want it or that they don't have the capacity for it yeah. um but at least if we've got a framework to work by and then you, you know talk to the values then um it's there's no um ambiguity ambigu Ambiguity. That's the word, ambiguity. Yes. <laughs> yeah. um, and it's just really clear and um, it's the other word I'm trying to think of. But yeah, it's it's easier to do it that way than to try and beat around the bush or try and work out what's not really working. And, you know, so yeah. it's just like, cool. Do you fit our values? Do you get it? Do you want it? Do you have the capacity? Let's talk about it. Um, can we get you there? Can we not get you there? And, you know, I just keep going back to my cancer story and, yep. you know, about doing what you love eight days, a day, you know, eight hours a day, five days a week. Um, if this isn't for you, that's fine. Yeah. 
I have got Please a massive go network. Happy. Yeah. <laughs> I can help you find somewhere yes. that will make you happy. Yeah. Um, so yeah, and I've, we've had to have, that, have those conversations. So what are the big plans for the future? And tell me a little bit about the sort of people that you work with, because obviously you're, you, uh, you, do, you didn't go with the advice of the big five, which I'm really happy about yes. because there is a definite need for a different way of doing business, a different yeah. way of helping people to do business. Yeah. So tell us the plans for the future. Um, I can't say too much about the plans for the future because yeah. we're about to launch uh, <laughs> our new, uh, yeah, we're about to do a big launch sure. um, next month. Yep. So, but yes, um, definitely across Aotearoa and the Pacific, um, we will be expanding a little bit further and beyond into that with the purpose to um, enhance the mana for our Māori and Pacific people. Yep. Um, and over the next 10 years, we want to positively impact the lives of 10 million people, although I'm feeling like that's actually going to probably be a a little bit too small but that's okay um, <laughs> one of the gina always says that we always under overestimate what we can achieve in a year and underestimate what we can do in 10 years and that's the power of that 10 year thinking well we started with five <laughs> that's right oh my goodness okay so we're at 10 and we're still thinking it's too little great still thinking it's too little um but yeah look we just as long as we're doing that um then we will be happy. But we have got some big plans and um, we've been working on what Indigenous business looks like and what Indigenous models look like. And so our new business model is going to reflect that, which is really awesome. Um, and yeah, just trying to also teach people uh, how to do business in an Indigenous way and just, you know, being really authentic and not trying to be someone that they're not and just really loving business and loving what they're doing in their businesses. So that's kind of all I can share at the moment. That's but more than enough. Some Thank you. Big plans. <laughs> Look forward to seeing them. So just in terms of kind of wrapping up, because time has gone so quickly, um, what would be the three kind of tips that you could give to the listeners that you have learned on your journey so far that mm. they could then take out into their real world and perhaps do something with? Yeah. Um, I think you've got to really have a good co-papa for your business. So clear vision, um, purpose and values and stick to them no matter what. Mm. Um, like really understand what that is and make sure it really aligns with you and who you are and what you want to achieve in life. Um, if you do that, then that makes it easier for your team and anyone else to sort of know who you are, what you're about, whether they want to join on the journey. Um, have a clear business plan. <laughs> <laughs> yes. uh, it doesn't have to be overly complicated it doesn't have to be 50 pages long um, it has to be something that's really really simple that you can look at daily weekly monthly whatever but re regularly yeah. and don't just yeah some people just like put it in a folder and leave it on a desk to um, you know get dust or they chuck it in some folder on your laptop and forget about it so don't do that it's there for a reason um, if you want to achieve your goals they say write them down and then you know take Take action. Yeah. Um, yeah. I think it's interesting. So I think there are two different types of business plan. There's the business plan that you have to do to get the funding from the bank, and that might be a bit more complex, but it's not the same as the plan that you actually refer to every day. And I know that um, Jen and I actually have our VTO printed out, laminated. It's on our desk at all times. We use it in our meetings, and it is just literally two A4 slides. That's yep. all it needs to be. That's yeah. all it needs to be. It doesn't mm. need to be anything more than that. Yep. And even the banks have taken the ones that we've done on the two pages and gone with them. So, oh, really? Yeah. Oh, great news. Okay, good. Yeah. But what I what I have found about business plans, just on that quick, yes. um, is that people don't actually understand what each of those different parts mean mm. on a business plan. So what even is a purpose? What actually is my vision? Yeah. Um, you know, what does it mean by goals? What does it mean by your target audience? Um, you know, so often I see my target audience is male and female, 18 to 65. <laughs> you know, like I don't actually expect any new business owner or even existing business owners to really understand everything inside a business plan, unless you've done it with a coach or something before so if you do need help then reach out to somebody who actually knows who can get the most out of it for you yeah. um, because then it's going to be a great business plan otherwise um, it's all confusing and you know it's going to be hard for you to, to sort of achieve what you want to achieve sure no I completely concur with that yeah. third and final tip what would you say um third and final tip it's okay to hire family members. <laughs> okay. As yeah. long as they get the job, want the job, and they are <laughs> capable of doing the job. Yes. And they align with your values. So interview them like you would normally interview anybody. Um, put them through all of the rigmarole. Get someone else in your team to interview them too. If you feel that you need a different perspective, we've done that. Um, I wouldn't hire any of my sons, but I'm happy to hire my daughter-in-laws. <laughs> <laughs> 
but that's actually a really valid point isn't it because I think that we tend to we get told oh don't employ family and friends and that's not true no. if the family or friend is the right fit and they actually said GWC the role why why wouldn't you yeah. and I think that what I love about the EO system it gives them some very um sort of some boundaries in terms of here's what we're expecting of you here's your accountabilities here's your measurables yeah, yeah see how you go yeah. as long as you treat them like any other team member um then you can't really go wrong yeah. and you know I guess it depends on the person but families sometimes want you to succeed more so right. that sometimes they're willing to do more for you um, because your family and especially if they're like a son or a daughter or something and they're going to hear and hear at the business at some stage anyway yeah. um you know they want it to be successful now that's not everybody yeah. <laughs> um but everyone's you know different so yeah I think as long as they see, get the job want the job have the cap capability to do the job and they align with your vision your values and your purpose then yeah. why not Excellent. Okay. Now I know that you have a number of different ways people can actually engage and interact with you. You do group workshops, you do one-on-one -on -one coaching, you've got a team that supports them with their accounting and other number stuff that completely <laughs> escapes me, but I'm sure you know what it is. <laughs> Tell us a little bit about what you know what you do and where can people can find you if they want to find out more about what you do. Um at the moment, the best place to find us would probably be on LinkedIn um, or Facebook. So just we accounting on LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, I say that because we're about to change our website. Right. But I um, mean, <laughs> probably still um, at Google search we accounting or even Auckland accountant and we come up on the first page of Google. Um, yeah, we do a lot of coaching, business advisory work, and then obviously we're a chartered accounting firm too. So yep. we can do all of the accounting, tax work, compliance work, your payroll, bookkeeping whatever you kind of want in that sort of space we yeah. can do all of that perfect and you personally how do they get hold of you LinkedIn I guess is probably a good way <laughs> yeah LinkedIn is where I'm yeah mostly I have got a Facebook page so you can contact me on there or Instagram yeah. um, otherwise you can just email me windy.tungy at weaccounting.co.nz that's beautiful thank you much hey just out of interest um, for Ave actually got in contact with me and he requested oh. a whole set of the EIS books for his family oh, his wow. family are now interested in learning more about it that's so cool. that is really cool that's and cool. I must admit I got a few clients who do do like to use similar kind of things in their business, yeah. in their family business if you like yeah we have a family um vto do you yes yeah <laughs> excellent i love it <laughs> okay cool hey well look thank you thank you thank you wendy it's been a really pleasure to talk to you and um, thank you for coming in this is actually our first kind of in-person podcast for a long long time so i really appreciate you making awesome. the effort to come in thank and you. thank you for sharing your experiences that's right thank you so much and thank you for everything that you've done for we for oh. we new zealand and we summer we really appreciate it and um yeah we're just uh at the moment now going up on the up curve waiting to hit the ceiling again but that's okay yeah well i look forward i look forward to seeing what you're about to launch thank i look you. forward to sort of, yeah, supporting you on that journey too awesome. thank, thank you, you. Thank you.